All right, let's hit the field. All right. Just wanted to talk, that's all. It's game four of 162, and the Yankees were trying to complete the sweep of the rival Houston Astros. Clark Schmidt on the mound as the Yankees play their final game in Houston until at least October. My recap, your reactions coming up next. This is NYY Recaps. Welcome to Yankee Stadium. New York City. Just when they thought I was out, they pull me back in. <laughs> How's it going, people? Get your brooms out. Get your brooms out. The Yankees have swept the Astros on the road to begin the season, and they are done with Minute Maid Park for 2024 already. So great start to the season for the Yankees. They are 4-0. Happy Easter to those of you who celebrate We have reason to celebrate the Yankees. The winning streak remains intact. Uh, Anthony Volpe, a little less of a reason to celebrate. He's got uh, some stomach ailments. He was out of the lineup today. Uh, Maybe hitting the Easter basket a little bit too hard. Uh, Maybe going after those peeps a little bit too much, making a few chocolate bunnies in the clubhouse bathroom. But uh, anyway, very good outing. For Clark Schmidt today, ran into some trouble late, as he usually does, but the breaking stuff was filthy. I don't know about you guys, but my mood in daily life directly correlates with how the Yankees are playing on any given day, which is why I've been in a bad mood for the entire winter the last, I don't know, 13 years in a row. But winning four in a row against the Astros on the road without Garrett Cole, I'm going to be an absolute pleasure to be around tomorrow. I've been a pleasure the last few days. I'm waving at neighbors. Dogs are getting extra treats. I'm giving money to hobos. It's just been a very good start to the season for the Yankees and thus for everyone in my wake and in general vicinity. Last night, the Yankees... Uh, were basically pounding the baseball. But today they were manufacturing runs. They made some big plays defensively. uh, And they scored without the benefit of a home run today. No home runs for the Yankees in this game, but they still get four runs, and they get 10 base hits. They didn't have a lot of double-digit hit games last year. And aside from Volpe sitting, the starters were in the game. So the Yankees weren't doing that thing where the first few games of a series, they win and then they punt. They were going for the kill. The season can't be won in April, but a bad start can really put you in a deep hole. And you know the Astros are feeling it, down 0-4 to the Yankees at home. So by winning this game, the Yankees have already taken the season series from the Astros. So if these two teams meet up again with the same record in the playoffs, the Yankees will have the advantage. They're done in Houston until at least October, and it's nice to get it out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish off these highlights here. You see the catch by Judge. Yankees win 4-3. Let's get to the recap. All right, let's go. Let's get it going. Donnie Clark says, do you see Soto's smile? Soto's got a wonderful smile. I love it. Very good first inning for Clark Schmidt. 11 pitches, 8 strikes. There were times last year where he had trouble early, and then there were times where he had trouble late. Today was one of those days where he had trouble late. Great sign from John Carlos Stanton in the top of the second leadoff double line drive into the left field corner, moving well on the bases. He was jogging, but he was jogging not like an old man. He wasn't running like O.J. Simpson in the Hertz Rent-A-Car commercials. He was just taking a nice jog on an easy double, and he looked flexible. Didn't seem like he was, you know, going through rigor mortis or anything. So positive sign. We'll take it. He went one for four with a couple of strikeouts on the day, hitting 214. Sounds bad, but it's better than he did last year. Uh, He came around to score on a bloop single from Jose Trevino, and that put the Yankees out 1-0. Jumping out front, Justin Torres says, man, we are looking good. We are looking great. And Caleb says, he's just wonderful. I love that. That is a great one. Uh, Schmidt had another good inning in the second. Uh, And then got two quick outs in the third inning before Jose Altuve hit a pop-up that happened to land in the Crawford boxes for a home run. 
Their left field is pretty much equivalent to our right field. A lot of cheap home runs. That home run had an expected batting average of 060. Son of a bitch. And still went out. Would have only been a home run in Houston and in Boston, where they have the green monster. Uh, Yankees bounce right back, though. Rizzo with a hustle double, and then John Birdie picked up his first hit as a Yankee to put the Yankees back on the board. A lot more contact-oriented hitters in the lineup this year, and Birdie is one of those guys. Lead-off doubles are going to be much less likely to be left on base when you've got guys who can put the ball in play, whether it's Soto, whether it's Verdugo, now Birdie, We've seen Rizzo making good contact this year. Trevino's had a couple of flares. Cabrera obviously struck out twice today, but he's been swinging the bat great. Um, So more contact, I think, is going to mean more runs, less frustrating innings where guys get left on base. Uh, Soto ripped another base hit into uh, left field in the fifth inning. That gave him three straight multi-hit games, and he was not done, but he's been putting on a laser show. And talking about manufacturing runs, it also moved Glaber Torres over to third base, and then Judge got him in with a sack fly. That made it 3-1. to one. Gotta love the Yankees manufacturing runs. That is winning baseball. That's how the 90s teams played. That's how some of the best teams over the last couple of decades have played. You know, last year, the Diamondbacks manufactured a lot of runs with their speed. We're going to be seeing them over the next three days. But uh, I'm loving the Yankees playing small ball. More of that, please. Still love the home runs, but we'll take the small ball. Top six, Clark Schmidt, in accordance with the prophecy, turned into a pumpkin, doubles to Altuve and Tucker to cut the lead to 3-2. Third time through the order has always been the biggest test for him. He usually flunks that test. Same issue as last season getting deep into games, but it's only March 31st, and he'll have many more opportunities. And he did give us five really good innings. I don't want that to be forgotten. I also want to say that I think he's going to get deeper into games this year because his stuff in general looked good. He was working quick. He was working with confidence. And honestly, I think he put on a nice performance. The line isn't super sexy. Five and a third inning, seven hits, three runs, five strikeouts. But he showed some pretty good stuff. Schmidt half. No walks, by the way. We're going to take a look at some of his highlights from today. New feature from for, for this year on the channel. See the cutter working at 92 up and away to get the strikeout. Another one up in the zone to get McCormick. Gets Myers there. Just good stuff all day. Freezes him with the inside 96 mile an hour fastball. Good job. Astros tied it up against Johnny Lasagna. Run was charged to Clark Smith Schmidt. But I thought Loisaga was the weakest link today. Throwing balls right down the middle. Fastball didn't have as much sink as usual. No trash cans necessary for the Astros. Loisaga wasn't great, but Caleb Ferguson did a nice job. Had a big strikeout of Jordan Alvarez. Nick Birdie came in for the bottom of the eighth and was absolutely filthy. More of that, please. More of more of that, please. Top nine, Yankees manufacture the go-ahead run. Glaber Torres picked up a bloop single, stole second base, and then Juan Soto with his third hit of the game, That put the Yankees out in front, and he is unbelievable. This year, 9 for 17, that's 529. 1.365 OPS, double, homer, four RBIs, three walks in four games. That's pretty, pretty, pretty good, as Larry David would say. Bottom nine, Clay F. and Holmes. He is going to be headaches all year. I can tell you that. I can just feel it. But... Somehow, the Yankees escaped what was not a good inning for Holmes. Gave up back-to-back hard-hit singles. And then John Birdie stole a game-winning double from Altuve, just uh, laying out down the line. And then there was a ball that just went foul from Alvarez that, if it stays fair, probably ends the game. And then Alvarez took one to the damn warning track in center field, 400 feet away. It got caught. And then there was a sliding catch by... Uh, Verdugo in left field to end things. But, hey, look, Yankees got it done. It was not pretty, but four wins to start the season on the road against the Astros, you'll take it. Ball game over. Yankees win. Yankees win. The 
Fishbone since hot corner snag was huge. And Dwight Seymour says the starting pitching this series held us in games and the bullpen was just nasty. 100% agree. A lot of calls for Emmanuel Classe in the chat. That was somebody that was brought up by uh, my co-host from another coast, Terrence, who will be with us on, I believe, Wednesday night, maybe Tuesday night, um, whenever the third, the la- or the yeah, the third of this of April, uh, to talk about the Yankees and Diamondbacks. But uh, he asked Scott Braun the other night whether or not he thought Class A could be traded. And then there was a, another writer uh, from Cleveland who was talking about that the other day. And, and the general consensus is that Class A is not going to be traded. Bieber, may, maybe, but probably not Class A. All right, so we have five more Super Chats to get to, but first, we got to give out the belt. Mr. Juan Soto. Which, is, it's not popping up, but I'll pop, I'll pop it up. I was messing with it before the game, and it's not showing up. So I will figure that out. Oh, man. Man. I'll figure that out. So... Juan Soto gets the belt. We can still keep track of it, but uh, I got something turned off here, and uh, it didn't pop up. You believe it? I Before the game, I was messing around trying to add something for a win streak, and I deleted everything. And so I lost a lot of stuff, and I tried to recover it and bring it back, but um, just stupid of me not having it backed up. I, I had been meaning to back it up. I've gotten the alert to back it up like 10 times on my watch. And I didn't back it up, so I got to redo it. But uh, anyway, so we got some super chats here. First one is from Damian Green, says, Holmes is scaring me to start the year. And I 100% agree. Thank you for the dono. I'll be the money! Uh, Dylan the Don says, Amazing pen work today. And I love the Dougie energy. Verdugo, definitely a high energy player. Definitely. Absolutely. Hey. Ruben numero uno says, there is my home run call. There goes Soto, the one and only. You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. Jeffrey Cole says, Yankees wondered what a good present for the fans would be after 82 and 80. Sweep the Astros. Absolutely. This, this was a great beginning to the season. Now, you don't want to let this momentum slip. You want to carry this winning streak as long as you can. You want to try and you know get it up to 8, 9, 10 games to start the season. You've got that you know, great energy to begin the year. Just carry it forward. You know, Just go as long as you can. Last year, the Rays, I think they like 11 or 12 in a row to begin the season. But uh, Yankees on a win streak. Uh, We got another super chat here from Mark Peterson says, 162 is still alive. We still have a chance to go undefeated. I wouldn't count on it, but it is possible. And I appreciate the dono. My quantitative, my math specialist. All right, let's take some more. Uh, Peter Ty says the Lastros, O oh, and four. I love it. You're a funny guy. <laughs> I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. Dave Bonilla says this Soto guy seems to be decent at the plate. Has potential. He's definitely got potential uh, to be <laughs> to be maybe an MVP this year. He's off to an MVP start, and I don't know if he's gonna you know, win the batting title or hit 40 home runs or whatever. But I do know he makes the lineup a lot better. And I do know that he is an incredibly tough out who eyeballs very tough pitches and uh, has power. Let's go ahead and watch through those highlights one more time uh, while we've got the chat, while we've got the chat filled up to about 1,300 people. You see Clark Schmidt working early, cutter in, and then – Stanton rips one to left field. This is the double. You see him coast into second. Nice and easy. Scores on a pop fly base hit from Jose Trevino. You'll take it. Dying quail. Schmidt obviously pitching well early. I thought the stuff was really good. Even the stuff that was down the middle had lots of movement. So he was able to get through it. You see uh, Trevino gunned down a runner there. Nice tag from Glaber Torres. 
they had to review the play and it got overturned. Uh, and he was, I don't know if, actually, I don't know if it got overturned. He got called out. So, uh, anyway, it was, he was out. This was the cheap home run from the little guy about three inches into the Crawford box. Nice swing from Rizzo there. You see the bat speed looks back. He's on time. Smoked it. Hustling. He's a bad base runner. Takes a lot of unnecessary risks, but I'm glad he took that one. Ends up scoring on the base hit from Birdie. And good thing Birdie didn't win the belt because there's no pictures of him in a Yankee uniform yet. I don't have one, so we would have just gotten a name. Actually, we wouldn't have gotten anything because we didn't have the belt graphic today. So uh, This was the double play ball here. Nice play there. Round the horn. Soto, another base hit through the hole. Just a seeing eye single. Tony Gwynn used to call that a base hit through the five and a half hole. Halfway between the six and five position. Shortstop is six. Third base is five. This is a sack fly to Judge. You see the uh, running home from Glaber. And then the strikeout from Schmidt. This was the double down the line to score a run. Kind of a meatball out over the plate. And then another one up the middle. Girardi had been talking on the broadcast about how you got to be careful with this guy. Not a good matchup for Loizaga. And then Birdie. This guy has filthy stuff. 97 on the black, outer part of the plate. I mean, look at this pitch. Just beautiful. Then Glaber Torres swiping second base. And Soto with the clutch hit. Nice job. You'll take it. You'll take it. Big MIG. 67 says Soto is what the Yankees needed. They definitely needed something after last year. Soto is, has been a big part of it. Uh, you know, I'm also loving what we're seeing from Verdugo. I know he doesn't he hasn't torn the cover off the ball yet, but he hustles. He has good at bats. He's only hitting 200, but he's had a couple of flare hits, just fighting pitches off. You know, Cabrera's emergence has been humongous, but I don't know if we can count on him all season long, obviously. Although it sounds like he's going to be playing third base for a while, while um, DJ LeMahieu is out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box score while we have a moment. Yankees did get 10 hits. They were actually out hit by the Astros 12 to 10. Let's go ahead and share the screen if we can. Actually, you know, that might be one of the things that's broken. My button for sharing the screen, not working. All right, so I'll just run through it. Uh, two for four for uh, Altuve, two for four for Tucker, two for four for Diaz, three for four for Pena. So a lot of hits from the Astros. Yankees got a hit out of Torres, three out of Soto. Judge was 0 for four with a couple of strikeouts. He's off to a slow start, hitting 125. He'll turn it around. Two for four from Rizzo, one for four from Stanton, one for four from Verdugo, Birdie, and Trevino. And then Cabrera took the collar, 0 for three, playing shortstop, still hitting 438. So couple of glitches here because of my dumbass. I deleted half the program, but uh, I spent I spent a lot of time reworking on it <laughs> during the during the show, and it looks like I missed a few things. So we don't have the share screen, we don't have the belts. But uh, anyway, let's take a couple more comments here. Oh. I gotta get out of here. Ivy Leather with a great comment says, "A walk isn't go, always as good as a hit." And that's what Soto gives you. I agree 100%. Runners don't typically advance on a walk. I mean, you advance one base if you're forced. But if you're on second base with nobody Game on first over, base man. and there's a walk, you know, it's just first and second. I hit when you need him. Uh, being aggressive, that's a great comment. And then the other voices says, I think the Soto contract will have deferrals. I mean, it's... It's possible. Why is everybody so obsessed with o deferrals now? Because o Otani got it. I think the Yankees will just pay. You know, I think they'll just give them a massive contract. 15 years, 700 and something million. That's like mid 40s a year. And he'll be worth every penny. He'll be worth every penny. And David Smith says now seven straight wins against the Astros. <laughs> AJC asks a question I've been thinking about and getting a lot lately. When Dominguez comes back, who's the odd man out? Right now, like if Dominguez, let's just say Dominguez was back right now, the way it is, Dominguez would go to the minor leagues. If Dominguez is tearing the cover off the ball in the minor leagues, that's the question. Let's say Dominguez is ready to come back from his rehab assignment. Let's just say Memorial Day, right? May, May 20-something. 
they're going to option him to AAA if nobody's hurt. If you don't have an, uh, a necessary spot in the outfield, if everybody's performing as expected, he goes to AAA. Now, let's say that Stanton is not hitting, right? If Stanton's not hitting, he goes to the bench or to the Phantom IL, and then um, Soto becomes your DH, Judge slides back into right, and Dominguez goes to center. That's option number one. If Verdugo isn't hitting or is hurt or something, uh, then I think Dominguez goes to center and Soto goes to left and Stanton remains the DH. If everybody's hitting and everybody's playing well, Dominguez is going to be in the minor leagues for a bit until there's an opportunity. Uh, Tommy C's cat says, IKF for the belt as usual. <laughs> uh, I'll be over here like winning. But uh, anyway, don't get too hard on Aaron Judge. Remember, he didn't have much of a spring training. He missed a lot of time. He's still kind of getting those at bats. I expect him to break out versus the Diamondbacks. I'm guessing by the time the Yankees set foot in Yankee Stadium, he has begun hitting. He hit one hard today uh, to center field that he just missed. I'll bet he goes deep either tomorrow or the next day. We're going to get Luis Heal tomorrow. Right now I'm scheduled to have Aiden Bechamps from uh, from uh, Fireside Yankees on with me, and then we're going to have Terrence for game three. So, uh, you know, we're going to have some collabs. We're going to have a lot more collabs on this channel for post games this year just to mix it up. You know, I know the sound effects and everything are fun, but sometimes it's just good to – have another Yankees fan on and talk about the game we just watched. And so that's the kind of the objective as this podcast continues to evolve. Mix it up every night. Make it fresh. But uh, thanks to everybody who watched. And as always, like and subscribe. Support the show at nyyrecaps.shop. We've had several hundred subscribers over the last couple of days. It's been really great. And the Yankees continue to be red hot, so you don't want to miss it. And I will see you next time. Happy Easter.